In this video, I will explain the concept of Pareto efficiency in the field of game theory. So let's start with a quick definition. We say that an outcome is Pareto efficient if there is no alternative outcome that would make one player better off without making another player worse off. So to understand this idea, let's take a look at the most classic game in the field of game theory, and that is the prisoner's dilemma. So in this game, we have two players, player one and player two. And in this scenario, both of these players are being interrogated by the police, and they both have a choice to either keep quiet or confess. Now, in this game, there are four possible outcomes that could happen. So let's take a look at each of these outcomes and determine if each of them are Pareto efficient or not. So let's start with this first outcome of if player one chooses to keep quiet and player two also chooses to keep quiet. If this was the outcome, we can see that player one gets a payoff of negative one, and player two also gets a payoff of negative one. Now, to determine if this is a Pareto efficient outcome, we have to ask ourselves, is there another outcome we could move to that would improve one player's outcome without making another player worse off? So to do that, let's say, what if we move from this outcome to let's say this outcome right here? We can see that this would improve player one's payoff because they would go from a negative one to a zero. So that's an improvement for player one but player two would be worse off because they would go from a negative one payoff to a negative three, so they would be made worse off. Okay, what if we instead move to this outcome right here? Well, both players would be worse off because they would both go from a payoff of negative one to negative two, so we can't move there either. And lastly, what if they moved to this outcome right here? Well, we can see that player one would be made worse off because they'd be going from a negative one to a negative three, so we can't move there either. So because there is no alternative outcome, that would make one of these players better without making the other one worse off, this is actually a Pareto efficient outcome. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we would say when player one keeps quiet and when player two keeps quiet, this outcome is Pareto efficient. Okay, now let's consider the next possible outcome. So this is where player one keeps quiet and player two confesses. Let's see if we can move from this outcome to another outcome and improve one player's payoffs without making the other player worse off. So we can see if we move to this outcome right here, this improves player one's payoff because they go from a negative three to a negative one. So negative one is better, but we can see it would make player two worse off because they would go from a payoff of zero to negative one. So we can't make that move. Now let's consider if we move to this outcome right here, this would make player one better off because they go from a negative three to a zero, but it would make player two worse off because they would go from zero to negative three. So we can't make that move. And lastly, let's consider if we moved to this outcome right here. We can see this would make player one better off. They would go from negative three to negative two, but it would make player two worse off because they would go from a payoff of zero to negative two. So because there is no alternative outcome that could make one of these players better without making the other one worse off, this is also a Pareto efficient outcome. So let's write that down as well. So the outcome where player one remains quiet and player two confesses, that is also a Pareto efficient outcome. Okay, now let's consider this outcome right here where player one confesses, but player two keeps quiet. If we went from this outcome and we moved to this outcome, we can see that player one would be made worse off. They would go from a payoff of zero to negative one. So right away, we can see that we can't make that move. Now let's consider if we moved to this outcome. Again, we can see that player one would be made worse off. So they would have a payoff of zero and if they move to this outcome, they would have a payoff of negative three. So because one of the players would be worse off, that's also a move that we can't make. And lastly, what if we move to this outcome right here? Well, once again, we can see that player one would move from a payoff of zero to a payoff of negative two. So he would be made worse off. So because at least one of the players would be worse off, we can't make that move either. So again, in this outcome, this is also Pareto efficient because there's no alternative outcome that would make one of the players better without making one of the players worse off. So let's write that down as well. So the outcome where player one confesses and player two keeps quiet, that's also a Pareto efficient outcome. Now let's check out our very last possible outcome. So this is where player one confesses and player two confesses. Let's see if we can move from this outcome to an alternative outcome that would make one player better off without making another player worse off. So if we move from this outcome to let's say this outcome right here, we can see that player one would move from a payoff of negative two to negative one, so that's an improvement and player two would move from a payoff of negative two to negative one. So they both would have an improvement. Neither one would be worse off. So because it's possible to move from this outcome to another outcome where neither player is worse off, we would say that this is not a Pareto efficient outcome. So let's go ahead and write that down as well. So we would say the outcome where player one confesses and player two confesses is not Pareto efficient. 
So one really interesting thing to note here is that this outcome right here, this is actually the Nash equilibrium of the Prisoner's Dilemma game. And what's interesting is that both players in this type of game are actually incentivized to confess. And to see why, I'll link to another video that I have on how to find the Nash equilibrium of the Prisoner's Dilemma game. But this brings up two interesting points. The first point is that a Nash equilibrium does not have to be Pareto efficient. And we can see that in this game. This is the Nash equilibrium, and it's not Pareto efficient. And the second interesting point is that a Pareto efficient outcome does not have to be a Nash equilibrium, which we can also see in this game, because these three outcomes, they're all Pareto efficient, but none of them are the Nash equilibrium. So those are just two important things to keep in mind when you're talking about Pareto efficient outcomes.